Hey there, this is Ryan Kingsline. What I'm going to do right now is give you your very first lesson inside of ZBrush. I'm going to present the basic, most fundamental things that you need to know to be operational inside of ZBrush in mere minutes. Now, the goal of this lesson, at the end of it, if you have never used ZBrush before, you will be using ZBrush at the end of this and you will be sculpting something and you will know what brushes to use, how to use them, and go from there. If you have learned a little bit of ZBrush before, then I'm going to be giving you in-depth knowledge into each one of these features, why you use it, where you use it, and how you use it. So let's get started. Now when you first open up ZBrush, you won't have these guys. These are all my own personal projects that I saved to the file. But you will have this guy right here that says Default Sphere. Now what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this. And that's going to set us up to get sculpting and put everything in place for us. Now a couple, one thing that can trick you up is maybe this light box doesn't hide. So one thing you need to know about is that this is kind of a file folder, uh, a folder viewer, so to speak, or a file viewer built inside of ZBrush. You don't have a lot of control over where it goes. It just goes to the default directory. So we're not going to focus on that. But to open it, you press it. To close it, you press it. OK, so now we have our very first model on the screen. OK, this is essentially our 3D model. We're going to be able to rotate that around. But we need to know a little bit before we move forward. A couple of interface items. One of the most important interface items you're ever going to see inside a ZBrush is this guy right up here. This is the brush palette or really it's the quick palette. We never knew a name when I worked there we tried to name it but it never fit because there is another brush palette up here. So we'll just call that the quick palette because it'll give you quick access to the brushes that you need and you can tell it's got the standard brush selected so we're actually going to change that brush right now we're going to click to open and depending on your screen size you'll either see these as simple boxes or they could be rectangles depending on how you set it up but what we want to do is look for the move brush it's all alphabetical, so we can just come down, click M up here at the top, and then that'll make it a little easier, and there's our move brush. Now if you look at the, well that didn't work, let's do that again, M and move. I'm going to hover over there. If you look below, you'll see the icon, it says move to and brush type move. Okay, that's really important to keep in mind. Those are identifiers that are going to tell you about the brush. So this is the one that we want, and we're just going to click it. Now the next thing that's going to be relevant is this shelf area up at the top. Now depending on your screen size, you might see a little bit more. Not much, but a little bit more. But what we want to focus our attention on is this draw size and Z intensity. Okay, and we're also going to just mention this Z add and Z sub. Okay, so keep in that, keep in mind those guys. But first and foremost, number one is draw size. So we can increase the draw size to make our brush larger or smaller. And then we can also press S on the keyboard to have that pop up. S as in Sam. And that's what I do almost all the time. So again, if you just press S, then you'll get that little slider and you can drag it back and forth. Now the next thing that we need to know is how to navigate. The first thing and the easiest to understand is if you just click anywhere out here you are rotating this model and you can tell because this floor is in perspective and it gives you an indicator. 
Now, two things to keep in mind. We have symmetry on and the floor. So we've got it right down the middle on either side. We have symmetry. And we have this floor, which is telling us where we are in space. A couple of things to know. That floor is relative. It's not a real world space unless you make a, a couple of changes, really just one change in the draw palette. But we're not going to worry about that. Because we're in ZBrush's space, so we're going to just go with the flow. When in ZBrush, do as ZBrushers do. So go slowly with me. Do exactly what I do, and then I'm going to turn you loose. If you do anything else, you can start to get in trouble. Because all we know how to do so far is we know how to use a brush, we know how to draw, and we know how to rotate. And I didn't even tell you about this button right here. But we know how to rotate by just clicking and dragging. Now what we're going to do is click on the model and start to drag. And what that will do is start to change the shape of this guy. It starts to adjust our digital clay. So I'm going to increase my draw size a bit. In this case it's 577. And I'm going to pull down so that I start to create a face. I'm going to start to look at it from a side start to pull back and you notice things are getting a little off kilter off axes like we're sculpting in zero G on the side it gets a little bit funky so how do you lock this down so you're looking from a front side top view well the key thing is the shift key so that little shift button on your keyboard. What we're going to do is we're going to start rotating towards the front view. And I click, start rotating, press shift. I lift my pin. I let go of shift. OK, so let's go to a side view. Click, rotate, press shift to lock, lift the pin, let go of shift. Let's write that down. Okay, This is really important because in the very beginning we're still learning how to walk. So we don't know these basic steps that everybody takes for granted. So you click on the canvas. Notice I just told you that this area is called the canvas. And then you start to uh, drag towards your view then you press shift when you are close to that view then you lift the pen or you uh, let go of the left mouse button and then you lift or unpress shift. So we should add a little little thing in there that says shift and hold. You gotta shift and hold that, then you lift the pin, then you unpress shift. So stop, get yourself comfortable with that. 